Hello everyone, my name is Glenn Gilliatt and my presentation is Near IR pH Sensors for Long-Term Blood pH Measurement. In this slide, we can see our sensing platform, which is based on the Psi 7.5 dye scaffold. Uh, on, the right, on the left, we can see that um, the uh, dye scaffold has a methylpipirazine linker. When a proton comes into contact with our methylpipirazine linker of the dye scaffold, it actually co-binds between the two nitrogens of the methylpipirazine, forming a, essentially a boat conformer. And that lower nitrogen isn't able to compete with that uh, conjugated system below, um, uh, giving us an internal charge transfer and a turn on for us. Here you can see the synthesis of our IR823 base pH sensor. On the left, uh, compound number one is our methylpipirazine sensor. On the right is our uh, sensor number two, which is the trimethylethylene thiamine. And as you can see, these sensors were uh, synthesized in good to good to yield. Here we can see the absorbance vector of the free uh, sensor titrations in uh, in in the image A shows that there's a decrease in pH at about um, 670 nanometers and an increase uh, about uh, 780 nanometers. Um, this is more than likely due, uh, due to um, the, uh, the amount of free sensor decreasing in concentration and the uh, amount of free sensor increasing in concentration as we go from high to low pH. Here we can see the fluorescent spectra of the free sensor titrations. Um, as we went from a high uh, pH to a low pH, we noticed that there was an increase in uh, fluorescence activity, more than likely due to the higher protonation of our dye, which, as you know, turn, as I said before, turns it on. So now that we proved that our uh, pH sensor is uh, detecting changes in pH, we decided that we needed a long-term um, solution to uh, monitoring. So we uh, decided to encapsulate our dye into uh, red blood cells since they give us a potential of 120 days for monitoring. So we end up using a lysis buffer that uh, will help us load the sensor and then we would uh, uh, shift the osmolarity of that buffer to then reseal the cells and then the hope is that they can be re-injected into patients. Next in this, uh, in this image of the fluorescence spectra of our RBCs loaded with sensor, we see when X sighted at 670 nanometers, we see that corresponding decrease um, in fluorescence uh, along with our sensor um, being protonated. So there's an absence of unprotonated uh, dye. In conclusion, uh, we synthesized two sensors that can detect uh, changes in pH. Um, Long-term monitoring can be achieved through encapsulation of RBCs, and the sensor still detects changes in pH inside of the RBCs. Thank you.